Hello my dear friends. Today the poetry we have taken up is Ben Jonson's To Celia. It is also titled Drink to me only with thine eyes. So, we'll take up the line by line analysis of this poetry and I would like to remind you that please don't forget to like and subscribe and comment on the video. Now, Ben Jonson was one of the Renaissance writers and is just next to Shakespeare in comparison. He has written many satirical comedies and n number of poetries. So here the poetry we have taken up is a sh short poem by Ben Jonson which is titled To Celia or Drink to Me Only With Thine Eyes. So let's begin the line by line analysis of the poetry. As you can see the poetry we have in front of us. It is divided into two stanzas. It is a short lyrical poetry and as far as the rhyme scheme is concerned the rhyme scheme is as follows A B C B A B C B. The same pattern is followed in the second stanza also. So we can say that the poetry is divided into two stanzas with the rhyme scheme A B C B A B C B. Now coming to the analysis of the poetry. Drink to me only with thine eyes and I will pledge with mine. Or leave a kiss but in the cup and I will not look for wine. So the poet here is talking about the beloved's eyes. He is comparing the eyes of the beloved to a drink which is so intoxicating that only by looking at the face or only by looking at the eyes of the beloved the poet feels that he has drunk enough. The poet is further talking about the intoxication of the wine as just like as the kiss of the beloved. Even if the beloved does not kiss him directly, she just bestows a kiss on the cup. And uh, even if it is a simple water or simple anything else which is kept in the cup, another liquid which is kept in the cup, but it will have the essence of wine just because of the kiss given by the beloved. So, Actually, his, it's a kind of uh, high-flown metaphor where he is comparing uh, or trying to drink with the eyes of the beloved or trying to drink or get intoxicated by the kiss of the beloved. So, uh, it is the next level of exaggeration. The thirst that from the soul doth rise doth ask a drink divine. But might I of Jove's nectar sup? I would not change for thine. So he says that it's not the thirst of the heart or it's not the thirst of the body. It's not just bodily pleasure which the poet is seeking. He is seeking for something divine, something heavenly. Because the seeking is of the soul. The soul wants something divine and that thirst of the soul can only be quenched by something which is divine. And obviously any divine thing is the nectar. The nectar which is the um, immortal liquor and that is with the God and that God here it is mentioned it is with Jove. Jove is the Roman God who is considered to be its another name is Zeus who is considered to be one of the most powerful of all the gods the king of all the gods. So Jove has got that nectar, that immortal liquor. And he says that even Jove comes and gives his liquor to me for supping, for drinking. I would not exchange it. Because the drink which he has got, that is the drink of the beloved, the, the drink that he is drinking from the eyes of the beloved is even more precious than Jove's nectar. Okay, so that was the first stanza. Now we move on to the second stanza. I sent thee late a rosy wreath, not so much honouring thee as giving it a hope that there it could not withered be. But thou thereon didst only breathe and sentest it back to me. Since when it grows and smells, I swear, 
not of itself but the so see here again it is next level exaggeration because the poet is saying that he had recently sent a rosy wreath the wreath made up of roses to the beloved and he had a purpose behind it it's not that he was trying to honor her but more than that he was having a hope and that hope was that when he will send the rosy wreath to the beloved if she would breathe on that roses she would give a fresh air to the roses after breathing it what will have what would have happened the roses would not have withered why because he sees or he feels that because of the breath of the beloved the roses would become kind of immortal it would not droop down it would not wither away anymore but what did the beloved do did she accept the proposal did she accept the roses no she sent it back to the poet but still only once she had breathed on it but still because of that breath that she had taken the roses still are blooming and it has not withered down and it is smelling giving out the essence giving out the perfume or aroma of the beloved and it is growing and smelling and not withering away so actually the poet is talking that everything which is in and around him be it the drink be it immortality be it divinity be it the blooming of the roses everything is because of the beloved if she is there everything becomes immortal everything becomes heavenly and uh, in a way of exaggeration he has praised to full extent to celia and that was all the summary about this poetry thank you